Welcome to episode 9 of Speed of Film Watchers. We have yet another new cast member. <laughs> Hello, I'm Master Leo Blue. Yes. Um also uh something also good news. For the first time in the podcast, I actually have a miscellaneous topic. Uh what's your opinion on the Detective Pikachu trailer? Uh um I'm not that into Pokemon. Yeah, I never um, played Pokemon. I also Yeah, I'm not really in the hype of that. Uh, I, I fucking jaw dropped when I watched it. It, was, it just was unreal. <laughs> I thought honestly, I thought there, I thought the designs were uh, nightmare inducing, but now I don't think so. <laughs> oh wait, I forgot to edit the description. Yeah, I noticed that the first time I saw a Pikachu, I was like, "What the hell is this? Is this supposed to be like a stuffed animal come to life?" <laughs> but then, you know, after watching it a few more times, then I. Kind of got used to it. Yeah, I think that was pretty much everything. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if you have anything else to say. So I'd like guess... to give shout outs to B Hill for getting a 206 in Gertie today. Oh, yeah. Shout outs to Brandon Scott Hill. You know, if only it was around for this episode. <laughs> uh, so I guess now we go into uh, the film I picked out uh, two weeks ago. Uh, the one in the poster in the middle of the layout. <laughs> uh, so we have my all-time favorite movie, Three Billboards Outside of Missouri. It's about a well, about I mother think... who puts up some billboards to get the cops to investigate her daughter. Yeah. So... Upon looking at the trailer, um, wait. So what's the topic right now? Um, we're talking about the movie now. All right, so, uh, yeah, I'm not putting um, up the current topic like I used to because I keep forgetting to edit, so I just said it and no current topic. Yeah, <laughs> just so, let the description say the current topic on the YouTube upload. When I, when I first heard the title, I thought it was a joke, but uh, it's an actual movie title. <laughs> um, and it's a lot more than what you would think it'd be, a lot more than what you expect it to be. Yeah. I had, um, yeah. Okay, why did you think the title was a joke? Yeah. And also, by watching the trailer before watching the movie, I thought it was going to be some anti-cop propaganda stuff. But <laughs> I didn't. I never. I don't watch this. I don't watch trailers. Period. So I don't. I can't really get an idea why you would think that. <laughs> so um. But yeah. So going into it, the atmosphere at the beginning was really good. It dragged me in. And one thing I really liked about the uh, the pacing of the movie is that every scene moves the plot along. There's not a throwaway scene in the entire movie. Yeah. Like, I think the closest yeah. I could think of is the is the scene with Mildred and the priest, but because well, it does have thematic purpose, because so she with groups, mm -hmm. that comes later. That's, that's oh, the closest thing. I actually completely to... forgot about the thing about the priest. Oh, yeah. The, um, yeah. Just talking about how the church is basically a gang. <laughs> I don't of, necessarily if, oh, agree with the, the reasoning. I would because of the law with uh, saying that you were associated with the gang. And if someone does something, even if you don't know anything, you're still you're still culpable because you were part of it. That's I don't 100 percent agree with that. Um, I think that if if one member of a group does something bad, then you can uh, disassociate yourself from that that person that did that bad thing. <laughs> Yeah. Um. I don't know. I just don't. It, it's it's kind of a complicated subject. Uh, I don't think it's that simple. Um. So, what did you think about uh, the scene? Uh, where? Okay. Are we into spoiler territory now? Or? Uh, yeah, sure. Go full spoiler territory. Ah. Oh. So one scene that really uh, stood stood out to me was was a scene uh, where. She's sitting by the uh, the billboard um, with the flowers, and she sees a deer. Oh, yeah. And, um, yeah, so I think uh, there's, like, symbolism there. Like, there's this beautiful deer here, and she ponders, is this reincarnation? Um, but then she immediately says, like, oh, that, what, <laughs> don't think you're going to get me uh, believing in reincarnation now, do you? Uh, I think, I think my thought is that's a, 
is the idea of, and maybe it's like some bond for how people can like someone's grief to join it, like some belief, like or a fear, like oh you're afraid of this, then join us for a reassurance or something like that. Yeah. Oh, but then um at the end of the scene when the deer goes away, she like break down. You know she she breaks down crying. Yeah, because she knows there's no shirt. I mean, of her daughter coming back. Oh, man. Yeah, it's just really heartbreaking. Um, oh, yeah, so there's... Yeah, so um, with the the main character, the one that wanted to get all the billboards up, uh, there's another thing. Um, there's a lot of drama and a lot of tension in the family. Um, the, the father... Uh, went out with this uh, this 19-year-old uh, zoo intern um, and left the family, you know, with just the uh, the mother and the son. And the mother is very, very angry, of course, because the police did not solve the case of uh, the death and rape of um, uh, the daughter. And um, the son is, is kind of important because uh, all of the events that happen as a result of the billboards kind of um, caused the son to be very embarrassed by her mother, by his mother. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm only thinking to uh, the scene with uh, one of the kids throws the soda can. Yeah. The <laughs> it's like whose can is that? And he kicks him in the balls. <laughs> <laughs> oh. The mother, yeah, the mother's really bad badass throughout the film. Uh, wait. Oh, yeah, there's another one where they're actually um I don't know where they were going, but uh they uh the mother and the son were both uh going down the road that has the billboards and the son was like, Oh great, I'm so happy that I get to be reminded oh. of how my sister died. Raped and killed right there. Oh shit. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, that's like one scene. That's probably I think that's probably my favorite moment. In the- that's like my favorite moment in our thing. I think about that line a lot. What? Uh, so, what did you think about you know when uh, Willoughby shot himself? I first was, when I first saw this, I was just I really didn't say anything. When I first saw this, I was like um, stumped throughout the entire thing. <laughs> I honestly didn't even yeah. think while watching. I was just too stunned by it. Okay, so um, I was definitely startled. You guys who don't know who Willoughby is, um, I mean, the if they don't know who Willoughby is. They should probably just turn the podcast off and watch the movie. <laughs> oh my gosh, dang! Uh, so at the beginning, you actually get to see him. He's like in the opening scene. Well, not not in the opening scene, but like the scene after yeah. when the billboards are put up. <laughs> Goddamn asshole! Um, yeah, he's like, <laughs> so, um. Willoughby was, uh, I think he's like the sheriff or something. Yeah, the the, the chief. Please. Yeah, the chief. Um, uh, and his name was actually put on one of the billboards. And so all the friends and all the people who loved Willoughby started turning against the mom. Yeah, like the dentist tried to kill, you know, tried to kill the mom. <laughs> but then... Uh, the mom took the drill and then put it into uh, the dentist's uh, Yo, thumbnail. No, that wasn't the point. The point of that was to make a statement about how how they how like how they're more inclined into believe some incidents of attack than rape. Like I, they, the idea of some of rapists getting away with that they did. It was why Mildred was kept denying it. Oh yeah, Mildred was her name. <laughs> what are you saying, the mom? Uh, I mean, either way. Yeah. Uh, I thought the uh, the development with the with the cop was really good. With the um, Vixen, you know when? Yeah, what? Vixen is the name. What? A Dixon's the name you're referring to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um. Uh, he started off very angry and, you know, very arrogant, but then, um, his arrogance led him to doing something terrible, um, 
But then the suicide note that uh, uh, Willoughby left um, really got to him. He's like, I know that you have potential. I know you could do great things. You just got to get rid of all that anger you have. Yeah, I don't mind if people got pissed at the idea of a racist redemption story saying that's what this is. <laughs> but Oh man. <laughs> I I think that in, anyone can go through a redemption arc no matter how bad you are. Yeah, I don't even think that's this is really a redemption arc cuz he's still not even close to a flawless character. Yo. Uh Um, oh, I should have. Trying to think of it. <laughs> I'm trying to think of any other plot points that like stood out to me. Um, I should have a few notes. Uh, wait. Because I don't. Oh, wanna, when you, you know, take out the moment when Mildred flipped over, I think it was a cockroach. Flipped over a cockroach. I don't uh, it was that. in the beginning when she stopped with Wilbur. There's some bug. I can't. I can't really tell what it is. I think it's a cockroach, and then. It was on its back, then she flipped it over. I am so confused. It was at the very beginning. <laughs> I I don't remember anything. Well, um, I guess I'm not sure. What was the symbolism behind that? Um, I can't. I don't know any official readings, but I'm going to guess it's to illustrate her character as one who is caring about others, even. Some insect. Oh, I completely went over my head. That's way too, way too deep for me. <laughs> oh boy, watch. Wait till we get to some, some abstract art <laughs> films like uh, uh, Pink Floyd, The Wall. <laughs> um, I don't want to like like. Uh, why? Go straight into the climax. I'm trying to think of anything else but the climax to talk about. Why is Francis McDormand so <laughs> ugly? Interesting question. <laughs> Miss, uh, what? <laughs> uh, Mildred's actress. This is Jumbo Chons and Jumbo. No, Jumbo both boner storms in the chat saying, "Why is Francis McDormand so ugly?" <laughs> Good. I... Yeah. Because she's like 50 or 61 years old. <laughs> I, don't know. I, don't know. I think she she portrays herself as very uh, strong, you know. I think that's, that's kind of the allure of her character. Oh, yeah, so there's one... Uh, speaking of her being strong, um, there's a scene, I think, halfway through the movie where... Um, the billboards were set on fire. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Funny thing, when I first saw this, my older sister was on two took it to, she, she, got, she was like, oh, my, I no, wait, I was thinking the other thing. She, literally, when she left, she said she was now scared of fire. <laughs> Oh no! Oh yeah, that was funny. Oh yeah. Also, the, also, I'm thinking the same with that line. Fuck the fire department. They probably said it themselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. And then, okay. So, yeah. So they're like driving along, and they're like, "Oh shit!" So they get out of the car, and then, um, apparently they have like a fire extinguisher in the car, and then they, um, the mother, uh, goes on to. Uh, uh, you know, put out the fire, and then the son goes to go and get some more fire extinguishers. Um, what I think is really interesting um, was uh, the order of the messages were ah, uh, shoot. The one that got the most destroyed was uh, the one about Willoughby. I did really? name on I it. never noticed that. And I've seen this four times. <laughs> Oh shoot! Yeah, so it's like the order in which they were they were put out. The one that was the most uh, destroyed was the one that had Willoughby's name. Uh -huh. um, and then when they were restoring them, uh, the guy asked, "Do you want Willoughby's name up there?" I mean, the guy is dead right now. Uh, and then she said, oh, "Just put it up." I mean, he yeah, paid for it anyway. He paid for it, so he was clearly okay with it. Did his name be on a giant billboard? <laughs> yeah. 
Should we move into the the ending of the movie? Or... Um, do I do I have anything else to mention? Uh, oh, what do you? Oh, do you? What do you think the is of the birds? Do birds get cancer? Or scene was. Oh, that was so bizarre. Yeah, that that seemed that seemed so weird. Why birds? Um, What's wrong? Dogs get cancer, uh, but do birds? Like birds are a very free flowing animal. Um, I'll say enough. I will probably never figure that one that scene out. Mm-hmm. Only guess that they're a very free flowing uh, animal. I am literally flopping my hands like wings right now for no reason. <laughs> huh? In Philadelphia? What? The actress that plays Max Mom actually plays a role in this. As Dixon's uh, mother. Oh yeah, she yeah she's the one from the Falling Diamond. Not yeah I know I was I was like oh it's the one, it's the mom from Natalian Dynamite. <laughs> I saw that. Yeah. It says I have a disconnection. What? No. What happened? What? A technical difficulty. Oh no! Technical difficulties. Uh, wait, do I have anything else to mention here? Oh, uh, do you believe the fishing game is a symbol for something? Because they do put a lot of emphasis on it in going hmm. to explaining the rules. That's a good question. I never thought about that. Um, Let's see. Let me remember. After I know it was. Fish, hmm. Cut out the magnets. Do uh, not put the fishing hooks in the eyeballs, as that is counterproductive. Like it could be like the fishing. fishing search out the ones. Search out the criminals. Don't put in eyeballs. Don't sabotage. Don't. Don't go after the ones that are helping you. That is not productive to the to hunting down criminals. At least that's what I think. That's all I get out of it. Um, Disconnect. That seems like a good take. Um, I, th- you know, when I um, when I first uh, saw it, um, I thought that it was just meant to be like this parting activity, like they're giving. Um, this is like the final. Um, yeah, it is. It is, and I could yeah. just be overlooking it, you know, looking too deep into it. <laughs> That's fine. I'm sure there's some symbolism to that because it is. It is too. It's too abstract to be meaningless. Yeah, and again, they put a lot. They they even went into the rules, even though it really doesn't matter. Oh yeah, so speaking of that, um. Uh, so, do you remember the scene where that guy came in, uh, he, no, he, he came into Mildred's, uh, workplace. Oh, yeah, that um, cool guy, that, that's, yeah, a lot of people get confused from that scene. Who is he? Yeah. Yo. So he goes up to, he, uh, he asks how much of that, that rabbit, like, yeah, doll thing is. Yeah, then he throws it so and gets yeah. saved by the bell. And he goes up to, um... Goes up really close into Mildred's personal space, and then um, talks about uh, how he would. No, no, he first said that. What if I told you that I was the one who did that to your daughter? And then Mildred asks, "Were you?" And then he said, "No, but I would have wanted to." Oh man, that gets my. That really got my blood boiling. Yeah, yeah, because. You think in because it's right age thinking that this is the case solved like when uh <laughs> it's funny, uh did you ever catch the small amount of foreshadowing in 
Willoughby's first letter where he mentions uh, for the idea of the, where the case gets wrapped up because of sheer stupidity. Someone bragging, like, which, ha which happens at the end. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed that too, that uh, it kind of came full circle with that. Um, and I thought that it would have been the case, but uh, wait, uh, I am stuff. Should we go into the end game stuff? Uh, sure. We can. We don't have to go in linear order discussing this. All we can even do. Okay. And then, so so Dixon, who is the the cop that um, uh, he got set on fire because uh, Mildred um tried to contact the police uh, the police department but then i was like fuck it and then threw molotov cocktails at the at the police station yeah oh um, yeah I, was, got... I actually some time ago actually read the r slash movies discussion page for that someone mentioned it and people were like oh she was calling to see if anyone was there is that's what people think. oh that makes a lot more sense yeah i didn't even know she was calling <laughs> yo um, so, uh, yeah, so she tossed him, awesome. uh, Dixon got all burnt up in the, in the explosion, in the, like, the fire, um, and then, uh, he's, he, you know, he has, like, lots of burns on him, and, uh, he goes to, um, a bar one night, and, uh, the guy that was at the, um, that was at the, the novelty store that was owned by Mildred, who threatened Mildred, um, he was sitting there. Um, right beside uh, Dixon, talking about how uh, he set someone on fire and like raped, you know, while she was dying. Uh, it was like getting really into the nitty gritty detail about it. Uh, Dixon goes out, he gets the license plate number and all that good stuff, and he comes back in. And then the guy starts to get very, um, very anxious. He's like, "Dude, this guy keeps going in and out, in and out. It's making me fucking." Um, uh, um, anxious. So he goes up, he gets some more beers, but then, um... Yeah. Ah, shoot, I forget what happened after that. And then that. Dixon goes to the table, uh, scratches some skin off the, the cheek, oh. and they fight. Mm hmm Yeah, so, and then he's like, I got the DNA of him. So he goes to the, uh, the new chief, the chief that came, you know, the, after Willoughby, but then the chief told them, uh, nope, it's not the guy. Like, Funny thing, I, when I on that r slash movies page I was discussing. Some people were theorizing that they were covering it up, and that that it was the guy. That oh, was, that's possible too. Yeah, but it's implied, you know. Yeah, he a, was out in someplace sandy. Yeah, so he was deployed, like maybe in the Middle East, doing you know. Uh, Army, Army stuff. stuff. Jinx. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what they do over there. <laughs> um, and it's also like implied that um, whatever happened over there, you know, happened over there, and uh, sh it should not apply to the jurisdiction here. Yeah, but uh, you really think the army would be concerned with that kind of stuff going out there, uh, soldiers? Yeah, I think it's like a like a war crime. Uh, I don't know anything about that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Dixon and, uh, ah, crap, I forgot her name already. <laughs> Mildred. Yeah, so Dixon and Mildred, um, decide to, you know, they say, well, he's not the guy, but he's the guy, you know, he still did something bad. Uh, let's go get him. Yeah, they don't care. <laughs> they're gonna do something. And then they're driving off. They say, are you sure about this? And Dixon says, no, I'm not. And then Mildred says, well, think about it as we go along. Yeah, because before then she was always planning something. Then she's like, hmm, go with the flow. Not really, that, care, not really that's worrying. The that's the ending of the movie. Yeah, because, I mean, yeah. <laughs> And they learned I was so angry. To, to stop. <laughs> they started to stop really worrying so much, and then just go with it. Is I wanted mean? so bad to see someone's head blown off. Or something. <laughs> 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 
well, it's because it really doesn't. They don't even think it matters what they do. Yeah. So why would... This is just le- it's just left up to the imagination what happened yeah, after. it doesn't matter. You just go with All it. All right. Yo, so that was like a... I would rate it, you know, 8.5 or 9 out of 10. Mm-hmm. It was really good. Yeah. <laughs> I already said this is my favorite movie ever. Whoa, your favorite movie? Yes. And you watch way more movies than I do. You know, uh, I, I'm not a big cinephile, but uh, um, if you I've say it's, seen, it's like, your favorite. Let me check uh, my letterbox D. I'm going to go to letterboxd.com. Uh, go on my profile. Go to films. Uh, filter out shorts. It's not counting. So, like, it says 572. But that's including a few Black Mirror episodes and... Uh, the stand miniseries will be more like uh, 500, 600, uh, 568 uh, or something. <laughs> so anyway. Uh, well, if you don't have anything else you want to mention, uh, this is, I think this, this is actually our, the longest episode of the podcast. Not bad. Nice. <laughs> nice and nice. Glad, Glad I could be on. Uh, uh, so, uh, do you have anything to recommend for next episode? I can recommend a movie for next episode. Yeah, that's how that's how movies get picked for next episodes. Be people go around. Huh. Any, so. like, like I said, I'm not a big uh, just pick big anything. Movie guy, but um, ah, shoot, I. Can even be a garbage meme because we had bad movies on here before, like Star Trek Five. <laughs> I think um, I've always wanted to watch. No, I'm sure that you probably already watched it, but I've always wanted to watch Fight Club. Oh, I love Fight Club. Yeah, so if I'm gonna watch an, uh, a movie, I want to watch that. Um, oh yeah, I've seen that. I've also seen that one a few times. It's 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 fantastic. Uh, we should probably get another yeah, good I've heard lots of lots of good things about it. Yes, it is. It's definitely top five material for me. Okie dokie. Alright, so we're I guess what, Fight Club. So next episode we're watching Fight Club. Get high people. Uh mm-hmm. and we are signing off now.